open up your brown book, baby. It's for you, it's for us, the fantasies. No one can judge us, no one can judge us. This is for us. Open up your brown book, baby. Hey y'all, uh, hey, it's your girl Shay Baby, and welcome to the Brown Book Series. You know what? Uh, y'all already know that I come with the best of the best of the best of the best. And today I'm coming with the best again. So go call your friends, let everybody know that it's six o'clock on Wednesday night, and the Brown Book Series is on. And tonight we have a treat. I know you're always saying, Shay, you always say you have a treat, but I do. Have I lied to you yet? Nope. And I'm going to continue on with the, what, the truthies, the truths, whatever. Anyway, it's a brown book day. Ladies and gentlemen, bring it to the stage, New York Times best-selling author, Miss Macy Yates. Hey, Macy. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Girl, I'm so excited too. How are you, darling? I'm doing well. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful smoke-free day. I'm on the West Coast, so we've been having our wildfire drama that we have kind of this time of year. So, But it's been beautiful and clear for the last few weeks, and I'm not taking it for granted at all. Yeah, thank God for that. Why is it, like, what starts the wildfire? Like, somebody go out there with a match and say, listen, now we're going to have a fire. Like Sometimes, yeah. And, yeah. and I think, yeah, sometimes it's, um, a lot of times it's human cause, and it's so dry that it just, like, goes up. So, or um, we'll have a lot of, um, like, thunder and lightning storms without rain. Okay. And then yeah. you get the heat lightning and that causes a lot of problems. And I think, but I do think that the big one this year was people being fools, but you know. Because you, know, you get them like every year, Macy, like every time, every year, there's it's like a wild there. fire. It's getting that way. I think like two years ago, we had a nice smoke free year, but mm -hmm. otherwise the last few years, yeah, it's been pretty uh it's been it's been a tough place to be hanging out in the summer but um the oh is always beautiful and october is quickly becoming my favorite month because this it's still a little warm right and but it's like there's some fall in the air crispness and i can see the sky so <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really now girl when they catch the people who start the fire is that like a felony do they like oh yeah yeah and um there's i'm trying to think because we had there was a big fire just a little over a year ago that burned down um, two towns in the county that I live in. Mm. Never caught the original like person who started it. They caught one person who started one because when one went off, it like set off this chain of like three people started fires in the same wow. day. But I don't think they were connected. I think it was just like it was like people are like, oh, chaos. And it's like so. Um, yeah. So the person that they did catch is hecka in jail. But like the. Um, the, they're still like investigating kind of everything around that. It's totally wild, but um, yeah, it is. big bad felony. <laughs> uh, no, and it should be. Let me write it down people's house. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a mess. So, Macy, girl, let me just be honest, right? So, I'm reading your books and I'm reading and I'm reading and I'm reading. And I'm reading. And I was like, how many damn books does Macy have? You have like over a hundred books. Yes. Girl. <laughs> okay. This is a two-part question. Because over here at the Brown Book Series, we are extremely nosy, right? How did you know that you want to be a writer? First of all. And girl, what kind of mind you got to be over there writing over a hundred books? And they like, they back to back, like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, you know, I kind of always, I'm, I'm just a book person. I've always loved books. And when I was a kid, I loved to read and I've been reading chapter books like as soon as they taught us how to do that. Right. And it was the same thing. I remember learning to use punctuation marks like or learning to use quotation marks and I was like oh I can write dialogue now and so as soon as I was reading books I was kind of writing stories mm -hmm. um and that's always been something that I loved to do and that was like my deep fantasy that I would rarely admit to was that I wanted to be a writer because I thought well nobody gets to do that like to me an author was like a celebrity, like it, it had as much chance of doing that as I did, you know, being an actress and winning an Oscar or whatever. It was like way out there. I didn't know anyone who did it. 
Okay. I didn't know that it was a possible thing to do. And so I always really loved it. And I would write stories for my friends. I used to write um, kind of comedies when I was in high school, like with all my friends in them. And like right. I would do um, kind of really goofy fan fiction or something. So I was always writing stories. And then I would start things that were in line with whatever I was reading at the time. So like adventure kind of middle grade stuff when that's what I was reading or kind of more fantasy um, stuff when I got into Lord of the Rings and things like that. So I was always kind of fiddling with what I was reading, but everything that I would write, I would always put romance in it. So it'd be like, oh, these, you know, like, um, I love the book Hatchet, but I was like, but what if it was a girl who was also in the plane crash? Yes. Too, and then they fell in love. And, right. you know, so I was always like putting romance in it. And I remember as a reader, I discovered the romance genre well, I, I knew what it was, but I had never read, I had read inspirational romance before, but I had never read like um, mainstream genre romance. And I remember I was 21 when I first discovered it and um, I was like, oh, I want to write this. Like it was like everything came together for me. And so I was like, I'm really going to try to write this. Um, and so that was the first time that I ever finished anything was the manuscript that I wrote um, to submit to Harlequin. Um, because it just, it was like my reading love and my writing love kind of all came together. And so I think it was, yeah, it was a long held kind of fantasy of mine. And I never really thought that I could do it until I discovered romance as a reader and it all just kind of clicked. Oh my God. I love it now, girl. So, okay. When you, when you discover romance, like who did you start reading that you was like, you know what, I'm good. I can do this. The very first romance uh, that I read, I think, well, no, okay, it's it's okay, it's complicated. I'm like, the first okay. sentence I read was by Helen Bianchen, and I found it recently, and I remember it really clearly, because that was where I was like, oh my gosh, this book blew my mind, like, this is what I want to write. But I think the first romance that I picked up and, like, looked inside, it w I was, like, in a Fred Meyer, which is Kroger, I think, everywhere else, and in the Pacific Northwest, it's Fred Meyer, um, and... I picked up a Harlequin blaze off the shelf and I opened up to a very basic scene and I was like, I did not know that's what this was <laughs> because you know, and, and this is what I will always tell people because people say things like, it's not your mother's romance. It's not your grandmother's romance, I'm right. like, I hate to tell you, but it probably is. Yeah. They may be reading dirty stuff. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Maybe not your grandma. I don't know, but mine was. No, and I thought, my grandma definitely. Yeah. <laughs> my grandma would always read romance, like literally with Fabio on the cover. And I thought, I don't know what's actually in those books, but she sits there, you know, and cries while she reads them and all of that. And I thought, you know, I don't know about that. That seems very really sincere. I was a teenager, you know, so you're like, eh. Yeah. Uh, and like Fabio scared me because I was a teenager. So I was like, eh. Um, and so I just didn't know. I thought I knew what it was, but I didn't. And I, which I think is the story of a lot of people who, you know, you talk about romance, but you haven't read it. And it's right. like, you know, so I remember like skimming through it and I was like, uh, I didn't know that's what this was. I'm like much more interested in it now. And, um, so I started, um, kind of with the books that I could find at, we had a book exchange and there was a lot of Harlequin category romance there and I could get it free. Um, and so I remember going in and picking those up. So that was like the beginning of my journey. I had seen the blaze book in the store and kind of leafed through it. And then I was like, I am going to find some of these oh, cool. and I'm going to read them. Um, but the one that I remember the most clearly that first one was the Bianca presents that I picked up. So, um, presents was my like big intro into category romance along with desire and blaze so very like some of the very early reads of mine were like helen bianca and miranda lee penny jordan brenda jackson um i'm trying to think because blaze hasn't been around for a while but sarah mayberry wrote for blaze at that time and so that was kind of my um intro okay, into category romance and and that's where i started as a reader was in category Oh my God. So, okay. I'm glad that you, um, you know, have the intro and where you start and all that good stuff. And that brings us to the first, um, segment in the Brown book series called name that book. Mm. <laughs> well, we give you, <laughs> don't freak out. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even name my books. So there's too oh, many. Wait, of them. Wait. No, these are your books. I well, know. You're you going to do great. Mason will tell you. When we give you either the um, like a synopsis of the book, the uh, a passage of the book, 
the okay. main character, because you have a lot of series. So yeah. you either the main character and you have the name that book. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Put my glasses on so I can see Macy freak out. <laughs> yeah. You just do very badly. It's okay. I'm not afraid no, of it. I'm you're gonna do great. It. You're gonna do great. And we still love you regardless. It don't even matter. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Hold on. Look, I'm telling you, you don't freak out. I gotta find it. All right. Name that book. I read. <laughs> I read to you what it is. And you just tell us the name of the book. All right. You ready? Okay. All right. Cool. Name that book. Orphaned as a child, she has dedicated her life to safeguarding for a local community. The last thing she needs is a hot-headed cowboy with attitude cruising into town. Oh my gosh. This is mine? That's yours. Oh, dude. Man, is it? I'm like, have I? Um, <laughs> embarrassing. I'm like, what what series is that? What book would that be? Um mm -hmm. oh, okay. Wait. No. It's um it's gotta be the heartbreaker of Echo Pass. Yes. Oh. Kind of, sort of, but not oh, really. Oh, oh, yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> I was like, boy, it's got to be one of the, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> bad boy. So I'm zero good. for one now, but let's see if I but, get. But, see, but at least you remember the book now that, you know, at least you remember the book. All right, this book you're going to remember. This is cool. Okay. Actually, this is one of my favorite books of yours. This one I'm about to read, okay? You ready? Okay. Name that book. Mac Denton can't believe the mean girl who once tormented him in high school is now the housekeeper. I do know which one that is because mm -hmm. I can see the cover in my head, but I might not be able to remember the title. It is, oh gosh. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac and Carl, no, not Carly. Not Carly. No, no, no. Lucy, I think. Lucy yeah. yeah, that's in Lucy Ryan. Um, Reunited. It was so good. Not unwrapped because that's the one that comes after. Rekindled. Rekindled. Yes. Ah, I knew it was one of those words. I was like, fun re. It's that series. <laughs> yeah, it's that series. You, see, you renamed yourself. You're doing good. Rekindled. Yeah. All right. Name that book. Character. McKenna. Oh, Tate. that is a tall dark cowboy Christmas. A tall, dark cowboy yes. Christmas. Girl, let me tell you about that cover of yours. I know. Baby, I was like, I want him for I love that Christmas. Guy. Yes, I like I want him for Christmas. I think that's probably why I remember it so well, is that cover is so strongly in my head. Because Hi. I love that cover so much. And there's just there's certain characters the writing experience sticks with you. Yeah. That's one of those books I remember writing really well. Yeah, and, and certain so covers. Yeah, one of your covers I love is it the um is it the uh the unbroken cowboy, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. I love that cover. cover. Yeah, he I love that cover. Okay, you're doing great. You're doing great, Macy. Okay, next up, name that book. When Elaine gives her business presentation to Marco De Luca, she thinks she can be calm, cool, calm, and collected. Wrong. Mm -mm. I'm so glad that of all the presents that you chose, it was this one because you get too far down the line in my presents and I don't remember the titles. I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but I do remember his Virgin Acquisition because it was my first book. It was your very first my very, book. very first book. So Thank I will you. always remember that one. And before we go to our next book, the, the last one. Mm -hmm. So, okay, when you wrote this book, because you wrote for Harlequin, correct? Mm -hmm. Girl. When you got published, and when they called you and said, "Hey Macy, guess what, girl? We are gonna, you know, do your book." What was like the feeling, and like how long did it take you before you got published? Like, was it a ten-year journey, a five-year journey? Did you just pop up and say, "I'm gonna write," and they said, "Okay, let's go." Well, I kind of did. I went, "I'm gonna write one of these books. I'm gonna write a presents," and and they were running a contest on Heart on I Heart Presents, which is now a defunct uh, blog. It doesn't exist anymore, but oh, they were. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, kind of through Facebook now because things have changed so much. But like, um, they ran this contest, and I wrote one chapter, uh, and entered it in this contest. And I thought, well, we'll see what happens with that because that feels less scary than submitting something. And then while I was waiting for the contest to get judged, I started writing like what would have been the sequel to that book, which yeah. the first book doesn't exist. It only ever was one chapter. But I ended up writing this this other book, which was Elaine and Marco, and. I 
started working on it literally in the mall food court while my mom walked my kids around in a double stroller. Wow. And um, I had this opening <laughs> in my head that the first line uh, is the same. And I was like, I'm just going to see and I'll, I'll write it and I'll see what happens. And when I was like in the middle of it, they did the results for the contest and I got like a form rejection for the contest. And they were like, we don't think this is good. And I, at that point was like, yeah, fair enough. I don't think it was either. Um, Cause I'd written like half a book and I was like, I know that chapter wasn't, you know, good, but I didn't know how to write yet. I was learning how. Right. And so I finished that and um, sent it in through the slush pile. Like at that point I was like, I've come too far on this book that I'm working on to stop now. Even, even though that was a bad result from the contest, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to send this in. And so I sent that in and, didn't hear anything for like eight months because um, that's kind of how, like, it's funny to me because wait times are actually so much shorter in publishing right. now. And I'll see people in some of the Harlequin communities being like, I've been waiting for like, you know, six yeah. weeks. I'm like, that's adorable. <laughs> um, because I sent my partial manuscript, the first three chapters in uh, snail mail to England and waited eight months to hear anything. Wow. Um, I got a request or I got revisions on those chapters and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't like expect anything. So I revised that, you know, per what the editor said and, and sent the revised chapters back snail mail. And then she requested um, the full manuscript um, and I mailed that to England and I got revisions on that. And I did those. And at that point, she gave me her email address. So I did not have to spend $40 mailing things. <laughs> England, which was good because I was so broke. And um, so I was kind of working with this editor back and forth, but because I wasn't a contracted author, you know, I kind of had to wait to wait until she had time to right. do things and work with me. So that whole process took almost two years. Um, and I did three rounds of revisions. And in the meantime, I wrote like 13 more books. And most of those I never published or anything. I was just kind of teaching myself to write. Right. And um, I think that's one reason I was able to revise that first book when she would get feedback back to me. Because in the meantime, I was kind of practicing and figuring things out and, you know, just keeping writing. And so um, when she finally did call me, it was funny because it took two years. So when I started writing, my middle son was a baby. And at some point during that process, I got pregnant with my daughter mm -hmm. and um, she was due like anyway. And I was like nine months pregnant when they called me to tell me that I sold the book. And she, um, when my editor emailed me, cause she emailed me first cause they're in England. So she was like, when can I call you? Like the time zones and all of that. And I was like, call me anytime. And I had, this is like, I always tell this story and I'm like, I woke up cause I was hungry and it's true. But honestly, I woke up cause I had to pee. I was nine months pregnant and I was like right. I got up at five in the morning and checked my email. And I was like, Oh, like, so she wants to call me. And I don't think they usually give bad news in phone calls. And so I was really, really nervous cause it had been such a long process. And I was like, just waiting for the phone to ring. And she called me at about 7 AM my time. And it was December 1st, 2009. <laughs> which I will never forget because then my daughter was born December 30th, 2009. So I always like, remember, I'm like, I always know how old my publishing career is. Cause it's just, <laughs> Cause you're cause you're born. Uh, yeah. So she's almost 12. And so is my publishing career. Um, and yeah, so I was just like, so blown away. Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like, and, and it was really funny because I didn't know a lot of people who admitted to reading romance. So I don't think I knew what a big deal Harlequin was. Okay. And I always tell people, like, honestly, my career, especially in the beginning, was fueled by, like, youth and ignorance. Well, I didn't know oh, that I was, like, submitting to a big, like, imprint or, or a, the biggest romance publisher, particularly at the time. And, and I didn't have any concept of that. I was just like, I knew I liked the books and that was what I wanted to do. And so I tried it and I didn't really think, like, oh, what are the chances? Right. And I'll always talk to people who are like, well, I feel like I should start here. This is what I really want, but I'm going to start here. I'm like, no, start with what you really want. Don't, don't like make yourself do entry level stuff you don't want to do. Like, exactly. you know, I'm like, if that's like the one thing that I was like, I was um, 23 when I sold that first book and I was like, I just didn't know any better. <laughs> and so I'm like, and so I had 
submitted and I, and I did it. And I say the same thing about my writing pace, to be honest, I didn't know how fast other people wrote books. So I just did it the way that it worked for me. And, you know, and so I just kept turning them in and like, yes. I don't know what to do with me. And I remember, um, really early on um, because I had a lot of books that didn't come out in the U S at first, they were getting published in England first. And they said they experimented with putting out like a book a month from me. Oh. And they were like, we keep waiting to see if people get tired of you and they don't seem to. They don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> so they kind of let me do, you know, what I was doing. And um, that was, so yeah, even that, even that aspect of it was more just driven by the fact that I was like, well, why wouldn't I just hand in another book? And, and especially a big part of my story is that we were at the time um, living in a trailer park on on assistance, you know, on food stamps and and government health care and things. And it was like, I, I was like, well, why wouldn't I hand in another book? Because every time I do, they pay me and right. like life changing stuff here. And right. like, so it was like this um, way to kind of get out of the situation that we were in. And um, it was and, and doing what I loved. So I, I was like, well, why wouldn't I, I, you know? And so right. when you get paid for your passion, yo, that's just like. Exactly. And I always tell people, I'm like, I would do this for free. If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But if, if it didn't pay and I had to go out and get work to help support the family, well, I wouldn't be able to write. I would have to do the thing right. that, that paid the bills to support you know, our, our family. And so, um, I'm like, it, it works for me if the writing will do it. So it's like, that's just, you know, what I pour yeah. energy into and, and all of that. So, yeah. So that's kind of my long winded, um, no, you're good. Cause it works for you. It works for us. Cause I'm like, yo, I can never, I can just go in and just pick a book. I'm like, okay, what I want to read today. Miss Macy. All right. <laughs> so next, next up, name that book. Okay. Character Clayton Everett. Oh, I feel, um, I just looked at this today or I might've forgotten because I forgot this book came out. <laughs> the first Christmas what? boy. How did well, you get the same out, Mason? Uh, well, to, to be fair. Okay, to be fair. To be fair. Okay. Um, the Desire Language Christmas Storm um, came out on September 28th. Yes. And then um, the print version of her first Christmas cowboy will be out with Rodeo Christmas at Evergreen Ranch. As a yes. Book. And that's October 26th, right? Yes, October 26th. So the sometimes the novella dates on their own when they come out digitally get lost in my head. And there's another one, The Cowboy She Loves to Hate, and it's coming out December 1st. And I think because it's not a Christmas one, and this right. one is, and it was out October 1st, yes. I was very confused. So like I mentally could not take on board that the Christmas novella was out in October. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I kind of forgot to say anything about it on online. Um, and so and that's why we have this here because I read it. Oh, and awesome. I'm like, yes, and I'm like, okay, this we gotta have to talk about the her and these, um, you know, cowboys is falling up in people's houses. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have a story about this novella. Yes, tell us a story. Oh. We want to know a little bit about this book right here. Girl. Yeah. So okay. I, it's the beginning of my new series that's going to start um, in 2022 called Four Corners Ranch. Yes. And something I love so much about that series, and I've literally already written five books in it, and it's not out yet. But I I'm, thought. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm like neck deep in this series already. Um, and I, and that's not counting the novellas. Um, so one thing I've loved so much about this series is that it is a little more Wild Westy. It's a little bit more like, um, I don't know. It just feels like less, it, it feels a little more wild to me, which mm. I love and it's been really fun. But when they approached me about doing a novella, um, because we love to do the novellas to put out in the backs of the books because the, um, the retailers really like it, which is great. And I'm always like down to do another fun story. Um, but sometimes I, I feel like I've written all my easy novellas, like every easy novella that I had in me has been written because it's very, very hard to write short. I think, it? um, yeah, I just, I think it's, um, it's tough to get all that stuff that you need oh, yeah, in one for a satisfying read into a short, into a short format. And I think, you know, having written a lot of 50,000 word books, a lot of the Harlequin presents, 
Mm-hmm. I have practice at it, but then you go to the novellas and they're like 25,000 words, 20,000 words. And it's like, that's not a lot of room for a story. So I always feel like I had a bunch of great ideas for novellas when I first started writing them and they would be really easy. And now I'm like, oh, they're so hard. <laughs> I don't have any new good, like short ideas. And so um, I always pick things that are self-indulgent for the novellas. Okay. They're always kind of extra in my schedule. So you'll notice that it's often, um, I do a lot of friends to lovers yeah. um, in novellas because yeah. that's one of my favorite things to write. So I do a lot of self-indulgent things. But um, one of, so this novella particularly though is not a friends to lovers. And it came about because I asked them if I could make it a historical um, because I love historical romance. I love to read it. And I love Western historicals, but there's not a big market for them. So you don't get a lot of them. See, listen. Okay. Then we're going to get back to your story. Yeah. It threw me off a little bit because I was like, okay, it's historical. It's Western. But I felt like it was kind of modern a little bit. It, it, well, it is modern. modern. So, because they wouldn't okay. let you do it historical. Okay. Because I was just like, is it supposed yeah. to be historical? Because yeah. I feel like it's modern. So, okay. There you yeah, go. It was modern. So I had asked, you know, could I do it? And they said, that'll be kind of confusing because the whole series isn't historical, which is fair enough. Yeah. Because um, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to do like an origin of Four Corners Ranch set in the 1800s? And they were like, no, you can't do that. That's a little too I much. I thought that's where you was going though, because I don't want to tell the story, but when yeah. it, in the beginning, like her, her whole setting with the yes. whole schoolhouse thing, I was like, is this back in the day or? Yeah. So it, yeah. it came from the fact that the idea I had was historical. Okay. But I wanted to do an outlaw and I wanted to do like a school marm. And I thought that would be very cute. And then I went, you know what? I'm still going to do it. Even it though it be. has to be contemporary, I'm still going to do it. Okay, okay. Because like I said, when I do the novellas, I do it to please me. <laughs> so but, but, um, in pleasing you, you pleased me. So I was like, <laughs> excellent, good. excellent. Yeah. And I, so I just thought it would be really fun to do something very different. And I was like, I've never written like, I mean, I'm giving spoilers too, but I'm like, he crashes into the house with a gunshot wound. And I was no. like, I've never written somebody giving stitches or anything like that. Cause I don't write suspense. So I never do. Like and it was suspenseful too with the whole brother thing. Okay, yeah. not to give away. But I was just kind of like, what makes him there doing it? Oh, yeah, so it was a little different for me. And I um I I had fun with it. So I but it's yeah, it's definitely my homage to like what I love in a historical, although I, I feel like I kind of do that a lot because like I said, I love historical romances and mm-hmm. like, I think it's not a huge secret that like Unbroken Cowboy, you mentioned that one, that one's Dane and Beatrix. That's another one that I will always remember writing. Yeah. And like she was my tribute to that Regency romance heroine. Yes. It is kind of odd and has animals and like yeah. all these things. And so it's, um, so I always kind of like to have nods to that, which I, I think does come from writing for the Harlequin Presents line, which I always describe to people as either, they're either like fairy tales for adults mm-hmm. or they're like kind of a contemporary historical because there's often like um, a, a bit of like society and like royalty. And yes. like so, yeah. so they have that um, kind of vibe to them. And so sometimes I think I bring that um, into the Cowboys too, just because, I really enjoy it. And at the end of the day, I like to have things that, you know, I enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. You got to have the, with, yeah. you know, the little things that you enjoy. Now, tell us a little bit about her first Christmas cowboy. Without giving it look, all the spoilers that we just gave. You know, yeah. But it's more spoilers than that, though. Like, the book. Yeah. I mean, and I think it was, was, it was a good book. Thank you. It's I I really love the dynamic of the like very good girl and the bad boy. And so this was kind of an extreme version of that where he's sort of he's kind of on the run from the law. He's not he's not a bad guy, but there's there's stuff. Yeah. And um and she I was like I just wanted her to be this like hyper kind of innocent um and I think I had her be kind of from a cult. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Vaguely. Um, um and but I just I loved that idea of her being very sheltered and him kind of being and I love that dynamic. I love to write that where it's like she kind of softens him and like shows him that there are beautiful things left in the world when he's like very hard and um kind of scarred from his life. And so I think um that was um uh, that was kind of the jumping off point for me. That's Those are tropes that I love. Um, I write them a lot. If you read me, you've read them a lot yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, so, um, and I, I, I always love um, 
for me, and I, I get mixed reviews on this from readers, but I think the people who like it, who like me, like it. For me, Christmas is bittersweet. And I think there was something like there, because it, it brings things up. You know, if you have issues with family, if you've had loss, if you've had all these things, then like Christmas is beautiful, but like there's just a lot tied up in it. And I think for um, for Tala and Clayton, um, it was like they they both were from such a dysfunctional family that like getting to write them having Christmas, right? Um, like was really meaningful. So when I do Christmas books, I kind of like for Christmas to be a thing and like not necessarily a happy thing, but a thing they're kind of learning how to have. It kind of mirrors the learning how to love. Right. Um, and, so, and that's what I like in Christmas books. I think sometimes other people like a cheerier Christmas book. Yeah, a cheery <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> well. Now, you mentioned Christmas for you is bittersweet. That being, um, is it hard for you to write Christmas books? Like, does it take you a while to write it or... No, I really, I like them a lot, actually. I think, okay. like, I like that addition, but I like, um, I like that kind of conflict because for me, so much of what I love about romance is it is about the way that people can go through all these hard things right. and love anyway. Right. So it's like, I think that you can't have the sweet without the bitter. Yeah, And so I, I actually love that. I love that it adds kind of a, a shorthand that people can relate to um, when you have Christmas as a, as a background and it gives you something so neat to orient around it. I actually just wrote my um, 2022 Christmas book. No, my 2023 Christmas book. Holy cow. Dang. I'm really far ahead right now. Yeah, you um, I, so I just wrote a Christmas book, um, which is a little early in the year for me to be writing a Christmas book. Usually I try to write them at Christmas. Right. Um, but I ended up a little bit ahead of the game this time. So, um, I did not, I wrote it in the summer, but, um, I wrote, I finished it. Um, I guess I just finished it in September, but, um, yeah, I was, it was, um, I really like it. I play Christmas music and <laughs> I, I like Christmas a lot because I like right. any excuse to eat sugar and decorate my house. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But I just, um, I like to kind of put the full weight of it in the book because my characters do always have family issues. So it's like, yeah. there's always something yeah. to me around the holidays, like the, um, the Daniels family. It's like, they have like these big Christmases, but it's always kind of sad because they lost their parents and like, yeah. So it's like, there's always something or the one that I just wrote, um, the hero doesn't like Christmas and he never really celebrated it because his family was dysfunctional and the heroine is a single mom. So for her having Christmas traditions for her son is really important. And I like how you can use that, those things to kind of add friction to the character mm -hmm. where, um, you know, you don't have that extra layer if it's not a Christmas book. So yeah, I, I really enjoy them. I have actually three Christmas books this year, I'm realizing. Because I have Bella, The Rancher's Christmas Storm, and okay. Your Christmas at Evergreen Ranch. So, Girl, listen, I said, Macy up there just write her ass off. I actually love it. <laughs> and speaking of love, it brings us to the next segment here in the Brown Book series called Who'd You Rather? All right. <laughs> Well, we take your heroes, we pit them against each other. Ooh. You let us know who you want to just, you know what I'm saying, roll yeah. in the hay with one night yeah. on it. We ain't talking about loving. We ain't talking about none of that. <laughs> we Excellent. talking about how Clayton knocked in the door and yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we doing. Now, Macy, the issue we're going to have with you is we got to make sure you remember these characters, okay? <laughs> I'll Google it if I have to. I'm yeah, friend. okay. <laughs> All right, first up, who'd you rather? Cooper Mason or Luke Hollister? Luke. Luke is actually my number one. Luke is your number one? I love him. Like, I, love and him I don't too. even know why, because he's a very different hero for me. Like, he's way more laid back than some of my other yeah. heroes. But he just, like, I think it's because I relate really hardcore to Olivia. Okay. Um, I feel unpopular because she is sort of an unpopular heroine, but I'm like, I feel like I have that in me. And, and it was, she was a really interesting heroine to write because I was like, it's this unflattering part of myself that I don't like very much that I brought out in her, that it was mm -hmm. like, she's judgmental. She's a little she's bit very, serious. Yes. She's serious. And I'm like, I feel like I have that in me. I try not to live that, but it was like that. something I related to. And so it was a, and I thought that he knew what to do with her. I was like, you know, it's very, actually, they're probably the most like me and my husband. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's probably why I love him. My husband's very chill. <laughs> Mine is too. I'd be like, yo, come in. He'd be like, it's okay, babe. Yeah, we'll exactly. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, you're fine. Yeah, I'll be going up. Okay, so Luke, it is. All right. Yeah. Next up. Oh, who'd you rather? Jackson Ooh. Reed or Calder Reed? Is it colder, colder with the black? Well, Calder is, Reed. It's a funny story because, especially for novellas, I steal um, <laughs> like weird names. I am totally Googling which one Jackson was. I know which one Calder was. Um, and, uh, <laughs> oh, oh no, I have them mixed up. So it's a good thing that I looked you got I brothers mixed up. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I still called her from, I had a Spanish teacher. I was homeschooled in, um, middle in junior high and high school. Okay. And so I used to go to someone's house for Spanish class and my Spanish teacher would bring her toddler, which was years ago. So he's obviously a full grown man now, but his name was Calder. And so I've just had that name Calder. in the back of my head okay. for a long time. Oh yeah, no. Um, Calder for sure. Cal <laughs> yeah, I had to look, but I was like, yes, he's the one with the older, with the single mom that like babysat him. <laughs> okay, look at you. I have a story about that actually. What's a, girl, what's the story? I live in a really small town. Oh, and this relates to Spanish class too. No wonder I picked that name. Now I'm remembering. Mm -hmm. So I live in a really small town and I've always lived in the same town. And it's kind of funny because here I'm like, so my husband's super friendly. He's like way friendlier than I am. And um, really? my mom too. And like, Wait, so you are so friendly. What are you talking about? I am, I'm, I'm not shy at all. Um, okay. but I'm like, if you um, like, well, I'm more like my dad. My dad's like not on Facebook, like at all. Like my dad mm -hmm. has like two friends um, and it's very deep and real, you know, like he's, mm -hmm. he's loyal, you know, but like, whereas like my husband is like friendly with everybody. He remembers everybody. And my mom was that way too. And like, when my, I had a friend that moved here from LA, who's also a writer. And she said, well, when I started friending people on Facebook locally, she said they always had two mutual friends and it was your husband and your mother and never you. And I was like, I know they're so much friendlier than me. Um, and so everybody, I'm like, I'm Haven's wife or I'm like Carrie's daughter or something so that's kind of my thing here. But, um, so I've always been here and, um, there is a ranching family that lives here. And I used to go to Spanish class with um, one of the younger brothers who was like, well, he, they used to, he used to come just in the car to like pick up his other brother from the house we did the class at. And he was like five years old. And I'm not even kidding you. He walked into the coffee shop I was sitting in right before I started writing this book. And he is a very handsome man now. And I've known this kid since he was five years old. And I'm not that much older than him, but you know, it's when you're in, like when you're 13 or 14 and they're right. five, it's like, and I was like, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be so disturbing? <laughs> like I'm married, so I'm not actually picking up on anybody, but I was like, that would be the most disturbing thing. And I had to write a book about it. So um, that was the, <laughs> the inspiration oh, for the was like, oh, like a grown up man now. Well, he was a cute girl. Send, send us a picture. Him. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so you're gonna go with code on there. All right. Last up, who'd you rather? Joshua Ooh. Grayson or Isaiah Grayson? Oh, I you know oh, Isaiah's such, Isaiah such a problem, but I love him. He is like one of my favorite heroes, and I I, oh, and, and really not really not good. universally well received, but so my I have two boys that are on the autism spectrum, and one of them is very um, like he he doesn't conform to the idea of what you would think. And I've known uh, my one of my husband's really good friends who's um, forty, so he like never got diagnosed until he joined the military, and then they were like, "Hey, you're you have autism? Did you know that?" And he was like, "No," but that explains a lot of things. Um, wow. And I saw I like. Isaiah was one of those heroes that I was like, I want to write, like, I feel like men in that age group or people in that age group, right. especially when their um, characteristics are not like super classic, did not get diagnosed. Right. And, and even with my son, in the, he's 15. And in this time, it's like, it's not been easy to get services for my one that isn't like middle of the road, like obvious diagnosis. My 13 year old is like, it's clear. And he gets tons and tons of help. Right. And it's great. But my oldest son has just had to fight his way through everything. And he's often misunderstood. You know, people don't really understand. And I, mm -hmm. and I wanted to write Isaiah from that perspective. So he's a really, really important hero to me. And I just, I just love him to pieces, even though he's like 
you know, um, he was one that people either like, I got so much email about him where people were like, I see my son in him. I see my grandson in him. And that's what I want for him. And so what I want for him is to find a woman that loves him yeah. not in spite of right. but all the things that he is. And that was so much what I wanted to give him with Poppy. And so, um, yeah, so I will always love that book so much. It's so special to me. And so, um, yeah, so I have to go with Isaiah. <laughs> You're going to knock down Isaiah. Okay. <laughs> I absolutely love it. We always we are, look. We already know that I'm having my mouth is not my friend right now. That I don't know what's wrong with it. That's why my team be like, say, click the next one. I'll be like, it's not me. It's him. He don't like me. I don't know what's his problem. He just don't like me. Anyhow, he'll go off in a minute. So you picked Isaiah. <laughs> the struggles of it all. So you picked Isaiah. Okay. So as far as writing for Harlequin, have you always wrote for Harlequin? Like, that's it. You're not going to write for anyone else. It's a wrap. It's over with. Um, I, what about indie, though? Have you ever thought about going indie? Oh, I don't have the, uh, I do not have the natural aptitude to go indie. Every time I think about it, I get tired. Um, and I, <laughs> literally, I'm like, I think some people are so gifted at all of that. And right. I literally just want to write. I'm like, I don't want to know any of that. And I don't like, I'll think about it sometimes because I'm like, I have this idea and I don't know what else to do with it. And wouldn't it be fun? And then I'm like, I would have to do this and this and that. Now I'm tired. So no. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. The, the, the marketing is no joke. No. And I don't do it. I'm like, I don't do marketing. I don't want to, I would literally rather write another book. Like it, it just is. And to me, it's like, it's all about what your strengths are. Right. And um, so for me, it works best if the only thing I have to worry about is the book. Like that's, that's all I want to do. And I admire so much. Um, Claire Connolly, who writes for uh, Presents also does a lot of indie publishing and she's talked to me about it before. And I'm always like, she's always like so delighted with like, I tried this and I changed. She's Australian and I'm not even going to try to do her accent, but she's like, <laughs> I, I, you know, and she's like, it's really easy. It's so easy. I'm like, it does not sound easy. I actually think you're amazing. Listen, and you I, undersell yourself a little bit, but like, yeah, you know, I cannot do it. I, well, I'm not right anyway, but I'm just like, listen to like when they have like um, indie art today mm -hmm. and I'm listening to all the other authors that are indie and I'm like, yo, don't y'all just want to go traditional? Like I get it because you know, you want to, you know, I guess have your own say, uh, have your name your own books, all that good stuff. But I'm just yeah. like, girl. Like, yeah. Well, and I think that too. It goes back to what is. I actually love not having it all be my responsibility. And like sometimes, right. you know, but literally, if my editor was watching this right now, she would laugh um, because like sometimes I get persnickety about covers and things. But it's like usually though, I'm actually really, really happy to have somebody else have like started the process. I don't. I like to critique from a certain point, and then I go, mm, "Can we change this? Can we? Can we do that? Or this isn't, you know, like." But I'm not like the ground. I'm not ground zero for the right. project. It's like we we work together for with titles and like all this kind of stuff, and that works so much better for me. Um, but as for I have written for other publishers. I've written for. Um, uh, for Berkeley, um, okay. which is Penguin. Um, yeah. And I've written for, uh, it was Random House, but it was Love Swept. Mm -hmm. um, and I've written for, um, I've done an anthology with Kensington. Um, and I did one book with Thule, um, which is a small um, right. digital first publisher. They do a lot of like Hallmark movies and things. Um, oh. I was part of a author series them so i've done some special projects with other publishers um but harlequin has been like my it was my first publishing home and it's been where i've had the most success it's so, been uh, to you. yeah so it, it works really well for me so right now i'm just with uh just with harlequin but i'm always like um I'm always like, keep me busy, guys, because I always think we have like a we have a gentleman's agreement, Harlequin and I. <laughs> I'm like, I it's not. I'm like, they're they've been so good with me, where it's like they don't put in my contract. I can't write for anyone else. They leave everything open, which I think is wonderful because I know yeah. that it's not like that everywhere, um, or even probably with every contract there. Right. Um, but it, but it's kind of like if you guys keep me busy, I don't have any reason to, so to do anything else. And so usually, like, they're open to you know, kind of whatever I'm interested in doing and that's So it's been a, it's been a really good relationship. Like my favorite editors have been there, like just by far. I just, I love working with them. I really do. 
I absolutely love that. You're about like me. That's how I am with my team. Because me working this mouse right now is absolutely upsetting my whole spirit. And they're like, Shay, we do everything else. I'm like, I just want to pop on and talk. They're like, you yeah. got to move to the next thing. I'm like, why? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I get it. I'm about, you know, and of course, and like you, some stuff you have to make the decision on, we can work it together. But for the most part, yeah, just, uh-uh, honey, let me do me. So, Macy. Yes. Rodeo Christmas at Evergreen Ranch. <laughs> I love that cover. Me too. It's so pretty, um, especially in especially in person. That was one that I was like, I liked it when I saw the picture. And then when I got the box, I was like, holy cow, this is so pretty. That is pretty. And it's yeah. available October 26th of this year. So tell us a little bit about Rodeo Christmas at Evergreen Ranch. So this was one that yet again, we file under the, I was being self-indulgent category <laughs> um, because it's a friends to lovers, which is my favorite. I consider it my personal mission to put out more friends to lovers romances in the world because I love, I love them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I love writing them. And um, this one I think really was like the whole book was spawned by the first chapter where his friend is coming for Thanksgiving and he's kind of telling his family, my friend Cal is going to come for Thanksgiving. And um, we find out at the end of the chapter that Cal is a woman. I'm not mm -hmm. really spoilers because you could read that on the back cover copy. You'll know. Right, right. And um, she's a woman and she needs his help. She needs him to marry her. And she's kind of his best friend. Um, from the rodeo. And I'm like, you know, it's always a stretch to do a marriage of convenience in a contemporary, but I like to try um, because I think they're so much fun. And so I had it. So they have to get married so that she can get access to her trust fund because her dad is the rodeo commissioner and she wants to ride um, saddle bronc events in the rodeo. And her dad does not want her to do it. He doesn't want women to do it. And she is wanting to like, kind of pioneer that. And so they're at odds and he's basically put a cost prohibitive like limit on her entering. And so she needs to get her money. And so she goes and marries um, Jake. I think his name's Jake. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> um, and so there's Colt and Jake. And um, I mix them up when I'm thinking about them because Colt's book is after this one. And yeah. It, um, but yeah, so Jake. And um, yeah, so that's kind of the jumping off point for their book. And then they end up having to go back to um, her family ranch. Um, so this is a Gold Valley book, but a lot of it takes place in a different town called Lone Rock. Um, mm -hmm. And because they have to go to her family ranch where she has like six brothers and um, kind of convince her family that they're actually married. And um, that was really fun <laughs> to do because it was a little... It was a slightly different Christmas book for me in that there was a big family Christmas thing. Right. Um, because she has both of her parents and she has lots of siblings. And no. like it was a very uh side yeah. note, I'm sorry. Being that she has six brothers, can we look for forward to books from those brothers? Yes. So the Carsons of Lone Rock is um going to be my new series with Harlequin Desire. Yeah. So all of her brothers are going to get their stories out in um, Desire. And the first one is called um, The Rancher's Forgotten Rival. And it was my um, kind of take on gender swapped overboard. Because um, they're not friends, him and the heroine, uh, Juniper and Chance. Okay. And, um, she finds him. I'm like, she's an EMT, so it's good. She made sure he wasn't going to die. I, I promise you. <laughs> she found him injured on the ranch and um, basically tells him when he, he can't remember who he is or who she is or that she hates him and he hates her. Um, and so she's basically like, well, you're my ranch hand. And so you have to work for me. And um, I'm like, if wow. you get on the ride, I promise you it's fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. a little over the top. But that was very much, that was one of my um, pandemic books. And I will just tell you, all I wanted was to have fun with what I was writing. So I was like, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. And I want the books to be like high level escape. Yes. So there's a couple of the desires, particularly that I think um, my editor at the time was like, I don't really know. <laughs> and I was like, but it's fun. 
and I just want something fun and romantic and mm -hmm. like yeah, you have to suspend belief a little bit but I think that it's worth it so um it's an amnesia book and it's like what was the same with um I'm popping around but Rancher's Christmas Storm yeah. I was like I just want to put them in a cabin in the woods and have them do survivalist things. Like, Listen, the, 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 like I I just want, and so for me, I was like, I just want to do what seems fun and like cheers me up. Um, and so, yeah, the am, amnesia stories in general, I just, I love them and they're hard to pull off. And it's like, I, yeah, I thought that was really fun. So yeah, the uh, Carsons of Lone Rock, the first one actually starts in January. So you'll meet, all the Carson family in Rodeo Christmas at Evergreen Ranch and then get to dive right in. Okay, but not in her first, yeah, because we didn't meet them in her, well, I'm saying we, like, they read it. They yeah. probably already read too, like, in her uh, first Christmas Cowboy. Yes, yeah. Okay, and then that leads us up to, that leads us to the Rodeo Christmas at Evergreen Ranch. Like, is that, like, book one leading into the oh, series? The, oh, they're actually different series. So her first Christmas Cowboy um, is the, um, the four corner series. So, okay, it's the four -corner. You know, um, <laughs> so people who have tried to make sense of my series will know that one of the tricky things is that there are all, there have been like gold Dolly HQN single yes. titles that are longer. And then there's been like gold Dolly vineyards, which is Harlequin desire. Okay. okay. And so for 2022, they're kind of more separate, distinct series where, um, the Carsons of Lone Rock is a spinoff of the Rodeo Christmas, but it's set okay. in a different town. And that'll all, all the desires will be that series. Okay. And then the Four Corner series is kind of, it's kind of set in the same world, um, but they're in a different town. Just in that, like, they do drive through Gold Valley at one point, but it's a lot more closely related to my Copper Ridge series. So like okay. my longtime readers really love the Garrett family, which was my first, um, that was probably my first like big, you know, yeah. series that I had was the Copper Ridge series and the Garrett family was the first family. And so the first- The Donnelly's, what, yes. what series of the, the Donnelly's in? That's also Copper Ridge. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, so you'll like this then um, because when, I'm sorry, it gets so confusing and like it's all in my head, but it's like the Four Corner series, um, the first family that you'll meet other than the novellas because that's what her first Christmas cowboy was leading into. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The first family is is also the Garrett family and they're cousins with the Copper Ridge Garretts. So okay, okay. So okay. Just go back to Copper Ridge and the, Christ the Christmas book for 2022 is called Merry Christmas Cowboy and it's with the hero is Wolf Garrett and the heroine is Violet Donnelly from the Copper Ridge series because she's okay. grown up now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was so excited to get to not only revisit the Garrett family, but to go back to the Donnelly family because I like that is an, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and give spoilers because the book's not out for a while, but I like the most fun thing was that it's an accidental pregnancy book. <laughs> What? And what so of course, because, because her dad is one of my previous heroes, getting to write him <laughs> and his opinion on that was pretty fun. I really yeah. enjoyed getting to revisit that. Oh and yeah, I need the, look, I, I need the um the arc on that. I need the ARC on absolutely. that. Absolutely. I yeah, will I will write that down and I promise you you will get it. Because I'm I'm so excited about that and it was so much fun to write. I was like, I've never done this before, but like navigating the uh uh, the kind of next generation thing was so fun, and I was like, yeah. he is not going to be amused by this at all. Yo, this is going to be hilarious. Kane is not here for that. He's like, and he basically, he's like, his name is what now? His name is Wolf. His, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Give him a motorcycle. What is the matter with you? <laughs> I was like, he's not. So that was like one of my favorite things I've ever written was that book. It was just so much fun, and I got to, um, yeah, just revisit that whole family and like look at a whole other side of it because she was kind of kind of the kid, but also she was older when her dad got together with because she was 17 in in that book. So she was um beginning to write her book. Yeah, it, that was really fun. And yeah. I'm I'm I have another next generation character that I'm hoping to do in the next few years, but I'm like, he's gotta grow up. He's got to grow up first. So. Yeah, I absolutely love I cannot wait until these books come out, girl. We're going to be over here losing our mind. <laughs> Author's moment. Mm -hmm. What's your most urgent priority for the rest of the year? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Like, I'm um, I'm working on um, 
my third women's fiction right now. And it's okay. really different. Well, we're talking in the literary world and just in regular world and just in regular life. In regular life. Okay. Yeah, um, both, both. yeah regular life and then your uh, literary world. All right. So in, um, in regular life, it is to get through my son's sophomore year of high school without coming to blows over homework. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. Yes. Um, because I'm like, you know, I didn't care about math when I was taking it. And making a surly 15-year-old boy care about it when I still don't care about it is low on my priority list. So there's that. Also, getting the most out of my um, Disney magic key that I bought. So I have got, oh. it used to be called Nanual Pass. Then they called it a magic key. And I was oh, like. Oh, I like the magic key. Yo. I, I like that. that, that, that no, I've one. never bought one before because I don't live quite close enough to it to make it easy to get there. I'm like an 11 hour drive from Disneyland. Girl. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's on the bubble. Like if it was, if I was eight hours, would have done it a long time ago, but it's like, uh, I don't know, but we've got one because they called it a magic key and I am that basic. <laughs> I was like, yes, um, I'm a Disney adult. Um, and I was like, I really want that. So I have to make it to Disney enough times for that to pay for itself. Um, so those are my very pressing personal priorities. And then, um, yeah, literarily is just to uh, figure out how to write this um, this book that's a little bit different. It's got more of a suspense kind of mystery thriller element to it. And it's very, um, it's new for me. So I am um, enjoying the challenge. And then I will look forward to immediately writing a presents afterward. And I'll be like, I'm home. <laughs> right. I, I, I absolutely love it. Okay. Off this moment. And being a novelist, what did you learn a little too late? Oh, to not take everything so seriously. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like, like I said, like during the pandemic, I, I, I was like, you know, it, this is fun. And if people can get on the ride, like there's nothing wrong with just wanting to write something that's fun. Like yeah. it's great. I love it when I, you know, I do, I take the emotional conflict in the books really seriously. And sometimes there's personal elements to it and, and you get really attached to it. Like I was talking about with Isaiah, like that really meant a lot to me. But at the same time, it's like, I always think now, it, it, don't worry about whether or not this is the right choice. You can, you'll write another Friends to Lovers book and you can do it differently next time. Yeah. Like, like just see what happens. It's okay. Like, it's okay if you don't like it and you, you can delete it. But like, it's just, it's not taking, not like sitting there and getting paralyzed because I'm taking every decision so seriously. So for me, it's like, I just always go, oh, well, why not? Just try it. Um, and so it's like something about that not taking it quite so seriously has actually freed me up to try more things and to um, and to just have more fun while I'm writing. So it's like, well, whatever, you can throw it out at the end of the day or just write it differently in the next book. I um, absolutely and now, you know, it's um, it's not brain surgery. It's it's fiction and it, it should be fun. Yeah. So um, that's kind of what I, um, you know, have tried to take forward that I've learned is that sometimes those kind of oh we'll just try it moments actually produce a better book this it is does, like torturing myself which i used to do um so yeah that's if i could go back and tell young me anything it would be that lighten up lighten up a little bit yeah. i absolutely love it macy we have one question left but this brings us to the end of our interview it's been such an honor talking to you girl oh, this is so fun that know this album went by so freaking fast but before we go well, before we ask our last question, I want you to let everybody know where they can, um, you know, where can they find Macy Yates, honey? Like, get your website, your social media. Yo, she don't Twitter, y'all. So, you know. No, I don't Twitter. You don't uh, Twitter. I quit that a couple years ago, and I don't miss it at all. Um, so, but I love Instagram. So okay. if you like the gram, um, I can't believe I just said that. I literally, my kids didn't even hear it. And they, just, they, they somehow did still hear it and it echoed inside of their souls. And they went <laughs> um, in the car. Um, I'm like vaguely on TikTok, but literally only like as something funny kind of strikes me. Um, but I love taking pictures of where I live and I love posting them. So Instagram is probably what I enjoy the most. You can find me there. Um, I do have a Facebook page and I also have a group on Facebook called Welcome to Copper Ridge. And that's where I post covers early 
and um, kind of give a little more inside info sometimes, like the story that I told about how I wanted to do a historical, but they were like, nah, those are the kinds of things that I don't often post, you know, just like totally out in public, but I, you get a little more like nitty gritty of the process in the group. So if you're into that kind of thing, welcome to Copper Ridge on Facebook. Um, you can also check out all my books at MacyYates.com. My website's actually up to date. Um, I'm not consistent because I'm too much of a control freak. So then that means that sometimes things fall by the wayside. I know. I could also get an assistant and, and not have to do these things. But then how would I martyr myself to my own cause? Right. You know what? So I prefer to be aggrieved by it. And um I think that's like the, my primary social media right now is Instagram and Facebook. But like, also, if you like Spotify, like people can follow me on Spotify and see my okay. book playlists because I make a playlist for every book. So if anybody wants to know what I'm listening to, I'm also on Pinterest. Like, those are things I do just for fun. But if anybody wants to get super nosy and behind the scenes, I post a lot of stuff there, like photo inspiration for my books. So, and I love choosing the soundtrack for my books while I'm writing. So like, that's just something I like. So if anybody wants to see my playlist on Spotify, I'm just Macy Yates there too. So um, yeah, so that's my, that's me. Let's see. Okay, you guys, you heard it here first. This is where you can find Miss Macy Yates, honey. She's all over the place. Macy, last question for the day. If you were writing a book about your life, what would the title be? <laughs> um, walks too fast, talks too loud. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's kind of neat I, I like that I like that ladies and gentlemen please give a round of applause to the New York Times bestselling author Miss Macy Yates thank you so much Macy for joining us oh, thank you so much for having me hold tight for me alright ladies and gentlemen if you loved that interview and I know you did please like subscribe, and share. All right, y'all know what's up. It's Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. You're right here at Brown Book Series. At 7 o'clock, you're going to move on over to Office Behind the Pages with Reese Ryan. Uh, Reese Ryan's channel, all the description uh, would be in the, the description box below. The description, the description box below. How, like, that's crazy. Anyway, it's all below, okay? Then after you play with Reese at 7 o'clock, you're going to move on over to Iris Radio. Cruise Radio with Iris Moments. Uh, with Iris Bowling, all right? So 6 o'clock right here, Brown Book Series, 7 o'clock. Reason why you're off behind the pages in Iris Bowling, recruit radio for Iris Moments. I'll see you guys on next week, all right? Be safe and, uh, yep, that's it. Have a good one. <laughs> it's this mouse again! Oh, my oh, God! Man. <laughs> ah! It was working against you. But you did really well. I mean, like, you handle it beautifully, so. You know, it's so working against me. The bad part about all this is I'm so transparent. I'm going to post the whole freaking interview. <laughs> Can somebody help me out with a new mouse? <laughs> my mouse is not my friend. Hold on, Macy. It's coming. I feel like if Ann and Matt wouldn't make me do this, then, you know, I wouldn't have to go through this. But they probably think I'm doing it on purpose because I don't want to do it. And so, but I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> she's coming back. Here she go. Okay. Here she go. Here she go. No, she's not. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how you do this stuff. The struggles of it all. Look, they're calling me like, shut up. It's not me. It's the system. You know what? Hold on. Let's go get better in time. Hold on, man. Just one moment. Hold on. Okay, there she go. Good grief. She's not. Hold on. <laughs> I can't believe this is actually happening to me right now. Oh, okay. It's chiming at you. Hey, yeah, she's trying. Then she got a mirror to talk back. Like, <laughs> hold on. You know what? Isn't like an alt control delete somewhere? <gasps> no! I found her. <laughs> what? 
Macy. 